Well, I'm Esther Hunt and I'm 99 years old. Well, I came down here when uh, I was a junior in high school. I went, I lived in Rossbury and went to Rossbury School and there they had two rooms. And uh, so we went through the 10th grade. And of course they didn't have any buses in those days. So there were six of us that came down here and our parents hired a woman to bring us down and they paid a dollar and a half a week. To, well, of course, then I, uh, I didn't come down here to live till I got married in 1934. In the meantime, I taught school for six years. I went to County Normal. They had a County Normal at heart, and you could go for a year, and you could get a teaching certificate that left was good for three years. And then, of course, you had to get some more education to renew it for another three years, which I did. I went up to... Uh, uh, Northern Michigan at Marquette, and uh, so I, I taught school for six years. Well, how did you meet your husband? Well, I met him when I came down here to high school. He was in the same class that I was, and they uh, decided that they should have a beach party to get to know we folks that had come from, uh, from Rossbury, and. Uh, so the girls said that first night we were, day we were down here going home, they said, did you see that cute little hunt boy? And I didn't, but anyhow, when they had the beach party, he invited me. So that's how I got to know him. And, but we went together for seven years because we couldn't afford to get married. Nobody had any money. So my husband went on uh, the boats for the one summer. So, of course, you're, when you're on the boat, you can't spend money, you know, you don't get off the boat, so you don't have any house. So we got married during uh, Christmas vacation on the 24th of December, 1934. First garage that we had, per se, was um, where the well drilling is now. And um, we bought that and started the garage there. And. Uh, I'm trying to think now. I know it was a very s small amount that we paid for it in, to what things cost now. Anyhow, we had the garage there and, and we, uh, and then we also used the building next to it for a showroom. And we, the first house we bought was across the from the feed store in Montague. And we, then we built the place up on Dicey Street. There, that barn and uh, house. And uh, Mr. Tiemann was a mason, and Mr. Schultz, which was Carl Schultz's father, was uh, the one that built the house. And the house cost us, at that time, cost us $7,000 to build. It stands there today, and uh, the barn cost five thousand. And uh, then we lived there until we moved. We built a house down in Mohawk Court, and uh, that cost us uh, twenty thousand to build at that time. And then we moved. We sold the farm to Paul Hepworth, but then he decided to move somewhere else. Anyhow, we bought it back and moved back there. And then we lived there till we moved out in this area. Out. The cars, I think, were Hudson's. Anyhow, he got the Chrysler when we sold Chrysler's. Oh, okay, so it was a car, a car lot, too? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. We have and car. then we built, they built the one up on uh, on the corner of, of uh, Fruitvale and old US 31 there. We built that building and, didn't, and so didn't, forth. And didn't you at one time ask yourself appliances or what? Oh, you yes, down yeah. in, when we were down in Montague, uh, down there across the well drilling, they had a building there and we sold farm implements, John Deere implements. That was during the war. and. Uh, my brother, my brother from the time he was 12 years old, he had his eyes shot out and he had only one eye. And they wouldn't allow him to take uh, 
an exam for to be a mail carrier because he had only one eye, but they took him in the service. <laughs> and so he was, he, they had him out in California, and my husband, because it was having trouble, farmers needed implements, so forth, and he, he needed my brother to help, so he managed to get him out of the service and get back here to help sell implements to the farmers. The dealership for the John Deere was, there was a building right across the street from where the well drilling is downtown in Montague now. We built out here uh, in uh, 75, I think that was, before that, I guess I, I'm terrible about uh, the days. The grass would have been about and, 75. Uh, anyhow, uh, my husband died in 86, and uh, this, the house that we had built here, the living room was uh, all knotty pine that he had raised himself. So forth. But then in 91, the house burned, and so this one has re been rebuilt. Uh, well, it was a new house. The other one was torn down. Uh, we have part of it is left yet at one end. There's part of the house that was here. You said the fireplace still was. And the, the fireplace where he uh, he got the sto rocks or stones went out um, in clay banks where he lived on the farm. He took them off the field with a team of horses when he was 11 years old. <laughs> and uh, then he had we had to have him brought in here, and uh, a man from Hesperia built the fireplace and he split the rocks. He said they were hard to split because they were, you know, old or something and so forth. But anyhow, that's the way we have the fireplace. Those are rocks that... Oh, Esther, when you lived there on Dicey Street, you had some cattle. Oh, yes, we had them. Right. Well, I, I that's what I saw. I got, there. <laughs> yeah, I got off on that. Then when, I mean, oh, yes, we, uh, we milked cattle. We sold milk, so forth. They, uh, had 60 head of cattle. The tree farm was ours, yes. He, uh, when he, when we got, when Walt got older, he knew that, you know, he had to do something with it, so he uh, sold parts of it to the, our children for $300 an acre. But the first 100 acres that we got for this tree farm, he bought at a, at a tax sale for $100. Think of that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, but uh, as far as the John Deere John Deere dealership, how long did you did you have did he have that? that was, you know, or that was gone by the by the early fifties. That yeah. they sold that out to two fellas, uh, and they only uh, had it for about a year, and they couldn't make a go of it, and they went to work for a Hink Hooker. Oh, went to work, mm -hmm. and that was. Uh, that was across from the dealers, across from Myers Well Drilling. But uh, he had the John Deere's from out when he started the dealership in the late 30s till yeah. around, uh, well, it had to be around 50s, about, about 50 or something like that, that they had mm -hmm. the uh, John Deere dealership. Two gals, you put on a luncheon for the John Deere dealership, remember? Oh, uh, well, we they always had in the farmers spring, they'd have a farmer's day, yes. And uh, they, uh, well, I suppose they showed some of the new implements, didn't they, and well, so forth yeah, to the farmers. The Anyhow, I had some ladies help us, and uh, we we always had lunch. We had sa sandwiches and uh, donuts, I guess it was. Yeah, coffee and so forth. lunch. Well, he was in the dealership for 48 years. Oh, okay. I remember him saying that. Chrysler dealer for 40 oh, yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Long, long time. Well, he let me start work at uh, <laughs> the <call. laughs> Well, I, I got something I can tell you. Esther and Walt were really good. They took in kids that were in high school that were having a little problem. They worked for them, but they had room and board, and they see to it that they got to school. That was back before my... Before your... Because <laughs> I babysat, and... Uh, I. She had these couple of young guys who were standing there, and I hung up a lot of blue jeans. <laughs> 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 and 
country. <laughs> yeah, they had those couple guys and they worked, but they also seemed to have they went on to school, finished, you know. Well, there was the first one we had was uh, Dick's age, and he was in Dick's grade. But he, uh, his folks lived in a trailer, and then they had a new baby, just like we did. We, uh, she was uh, 18, 17 years younger than Dick, and uh, anyhow, he was going to leave uh, school and go into the service. And uh, L.D. Townsend, who was the principal, and he didn't want that to happen, so he asked if we would take him. So we took him in, and he uh, graduated, and then he went on to college. And he, he became a colonel, didn't he, Dick, in the service yeah, or yeah. something? He, he uh, and, yeah, uh, made a career, career out of the military. Well, served, served two tours in Vietnam and uh, retired from the military at 20, after 23 years. And he died back in 02 of a brain aneurysm. And then we had another boy that uh, uh, he lived up at Rossbury, and he, uh, well, his own father lived in Shelby, and his mother was married again, and he lived in Rossbury with him. But anyhow, he was having trouble in the family. I don't know what it was. And he was going to quit school, and and uh, Mr. Bach was a, and. Uh, and Nancy Rose, they were looking out for him, and so they asked if we would take him. And so we had him. He he graduated uh, from high school, and he graduated from college, and so forth. And he's well, he became a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had experience, and I always call him our foster children, and so forth. He's, he lives out in Connecticut now. Now, do you see him anymore, or Pardon? does he come? Does he come by a visit anymore, or, or like? oh yes, oh yes, he uh, we talked to him. He yeah, he did live. He did move to Grand Haven for a while, then he moved back to Connecticut. I was a school teacher for six years. Six years, so okay. I I intended to. Uh, I was going back to get some more. Uh, and get a certificate, so, but then I became pregnant for my son, fifth child. So she was born on my 43rd birthday. <laughs> so that's why I quit teaching. Okay. Uh, when I was uh, younger, why we, you know, we played ball a lot and so forth, and of course we walked to school, and. Uh, and I've always been active in this later years Why there was a group of us that we went walking every morning, a group of us older people out here. And, uh, and I played ball when I was uh, taught school too. I always, uh, you know, that of course they always thought that a woman teacher didn't know how to play ball and so forth. So <laughs> I remember the one school I went to and then also I went out to play ball with them. They were quite surprised that I could play well, as well as some of, as the boys could, because I uh, I was for space on uh, the team from Montague High School that uh, won this tournament that year. As a matter of fact, we won all of it. We won the the boys won the baseball and we won the softball and uh, and they won the track track that year. Of 1929, that was. Okay. That's when I graduated from high school. Now you have all your friends over today. I guess you guys usually well, you play cards on Wednesdays. Yes. Now, um, as far as age differences, do you want to introduce them all, or? Well, <laughs> did they tell them, Judy? <laughs> I. I'm playing cards with them because I live in the neighborhood and my mother played cards with them until she passed away. And then they decided, I guess they needed another face. And <laughs> so then I come and joined. And, and age differences? Well, I'm, I, have, I lie so much I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, you don't, you so, don't have I'm to. I'm 77. <laughs> now you're just the baby. <laughs> I'm the youngest one until the, the secretary from the church comes out sometimes and plays with us, and then she's younger, so then 
<laughs> she, she gets through it too, so she comes out there sometimes. Then Irene plays with us. And, hmm? Irene, you tell them how year old you are. I'm 95. Hmm. Okay. And so, then we have another one that's, uh, I don't know, Nada, what is she? And she is not here now. She's in uh, Tucson. She goes, she'll be coming back next month. Yeah. And she's uh, 90. I think she two, will be 92. 91 I think or 92. 92. I think so. Uh -huh. And we lost one of them last yeah, Friday, just, which is very sad. She was 92. She was 93. Mm -hmm. But we, we had, there were, and well, then, then Florence Sedequist played with us too, and she's, She's going to be 96 this month. Now, who's that? So Florence. we were... Florence. Florence. Oh, yeah, Florence. Florence. That's right. She's so playing we, with her. We had quite a group of 90-year-olds. Yeah. Well, Bart and Marge, Bart with Rufus Hunt and his wife Marge, started the hardware. Bart worked at Cottonettle as a guard during the war, and he started the hardware in April of 1946 on it, and he and Marge ran the hardware and it was downtown, uh, across the street from uh, the senior center. Where Todd's are today. Yeah. Where Todd's are. Was it Todd's today now? No. No, no. you had that little piece in between. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was uh, one half of the hardware there. And then in the early 50s, when George and Leonard came in, Leonard came in first for yes. George, they yeah, expanded yeah. the hardware to the building next door, or to the room next door, you might say, which was Bartow Bolt Works and knocked out the wall in between. And uh, so it doubled the sides of the hardware on it. And uh, when Bart started out, of course, it was hard to get merchandise. He used to spray things out on the shelf. They said, these are- yeah, I got a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> he'd sell anything, he'd get a hold, hold of them yes. all uh, on it. And uh, then uh, Mother and George came in there. And then in 65, I came into the hardware, and that's when Bart retired on it. And, uh, then in 93, we uh, moved to Whitehall from the hardware there. Parking was kind of a problem, and we felt we needed more room. And we moved over there uh, on it after we hired a firm to do a survey on it, which supported the idea to, to move. And I can still remember we moved over on a Saturday and a Sunday. And, uh, well, Brian was instrumental and got a bunch of the fellows that I snowmobiled with to volunteer and help us move. And, at one time, I think we had 10 vehicles with trailers and 40 people <laughs> and 400 totes, these plastic, like a clothes basket, uh, that they were used on a Saturday to get moved over. And we got moved over there in about a day and a half, which was kind of surprising, but we had a real lot of good help on it. And uh, that in the first year, our business uh, uh, increased 40% because we had the parking and things were better displayed and what have you. Uh, How is it doing right now during this recession? Is it still doing okay? Or? Well, there aren't <coughs> any hunts involved. I, right. uh, I retired in 98 and the year after that my, uh, my brother was in with us. Well, there was Ron Hunt in there for a while and Claude Babcock mm -hmm. for a while and then my brother uh, Pete Hunt and uh, he retired in about uh, 99. And it's just the name only. There aren't any hunts in there anymore, but it uh, seems to be surviving because small town hardware is oriented to service. Uh, Much better than driving all the way to Muskegon, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what about, let me ask you, what about um, barter or anything? Did they, did they barter at all in the early days when the people come in and have a, a running tab or anything? And uh. Well, first of all, a handshake meant a lot in those days. Right. And, uh, um, well, I didn't work much in the hardware, only on weekends once in a while. Or when the kids had to practice their horses or something. <laughs> Would you work for me, Mom? You know, and that kind of thing. <laughs> but uh, Leonard went in the year after Bart was in there. And uh, then a year after Leonard went in, then George came in, yeah. yes. And, uh, uh, what? Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yes. It, uh, it, everything was like scouts on or more or less. They, they, they never checked the cash register out, or did they? Any of that stuff. They never balanced the cash register, at least not oh, when Leonard was, yeah, was working it. And, uh, uh, 
and, and the reputation was that if they said they do something, they did it or got it for you. That was that was the big service that they served then, yeah. And the, yes, uh, we were a little dis very disappointed when they moved it to Whitehall. Leonard said, I'm not going across that yeah. bridge anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it. I yeah so uh, it took quite a while. It was just yeah. difficult for him. Yes, it was. For him to but they did run charge accounts, so I think we had a charge account on Hunt's Hardware. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they did. Forever. Yes, yes, yes. we always had a running mm -hmm. account there, I know, because we built our house and we had it. It was paying Hunt's Hardware every month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when my husband got out of high school, he graduated with a, a scholarship to Michigan State on football. But of course, Uncle Sam wanted him more, more, so he had to go into the service, and he, he was uh, sent overseas to, uh, to Germany or in that in that war zone, and he was captured in the Battle of the Bulge, and he was a prisoner for over a year. When he came home, he weighed 122 pounds, and he was a he was a good good sized man. Leonard was, yeah. <laughs> He was, what, about 2.30 or so, so his teeth were all loose and malnutrition and everything. But uh, he, uh, he got back and went in the hard way then, yes. So he uh, owned it. I can tell you one thing, too, when he said when he was in high school, Bart Rufus would put up ice in the winter and cut ice in, the, in White Lake, you know, and Leonard had to go and help him before school, load it up and everything, and then Bart would deliver it. What he had left, I guess he put in an ice house with the uh, um, wood Sausage. shavings or something Sausage. to keep it cold, cold. Yeah, and so it it, uh, it was a very tough growing up for the Hunt family, from what I understand. When they were kids, yes, his mother died, and they didn't have money to pay for the funeral, so they they bartered, and the um, Grandpa Hunt uh, did work for the funeral. Uh, whoever it was then. G, probably ever G, huh? Yeah. Okay. Now, did, did he gain his weight back after he got... Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a picture of a, one of the early pictures of the hardware that they took. Right after Bart, the, the first year we went in, Bart and Leonard had pictures taken of all the family. My husband was a fire chief for few years. And my husband and was my just kids. assistant chief. <laughs> <laughs> they all had yeah. to, uh, they never en enjoyed the summers because he'd make them go down and cut the, the little league field. They didn't appreciate that, but they got it done. And uh, so really, and I met him when I came to uh, Montague to go to high school. I met my husband, and we dated for a few years, on and off. I'd get sick of him, and then I'd go to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but I always went back, so. And then when we got engaged, why, he would pick up whole buildings in Muskegon, tear them down to get the lumber, because we wanted to build, but we didn't have any money. And uh, his dad owned quite a bit of uh, property there. And he gave us a lot so we could build a house. And we had a horse and what do you call it, thing to scoop out for the basement? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Old Hans Miller, remember him? <laughs> he and his horse, they dug our basement. And uh, anyway, he'd tear these buildings down, and then I'd go down and pound the nails out, you know, so we could reuse the lumber. It was quite a chore. <laughs> but we finally got enough lumber so we could start building. How long did it take to build the house? Oh, quite a while. <laughs> quite a while. Of course, his dad was a carpenter, and uh, so he did the main work you know and everything so we finally got it so we could move in it but we didn't have uh, i can remember we didn't have any stove we didn't have nothing i don't know how we even cooked or i don't remember all that 
but it, it was worth it. Now is it still standing? The house, yeah. Yeah. Only still... place I ever lived. Okay, so you're still living there then? Yeah, still living it. Okay. <laughs> How do you play your rummy game? <laughs> How do you play your rummy game? <laughs> well, it's just like the game of rummy, except that we, uh, the dealer, the uh, first card that the dealer deals out, they turn it up, and whatever number that is, why right, the person gets that many cards. Uh, anything is the same as the number except from uh, the 10 on up to the ace is 10, uh, ca uh, 10 cards that you get, and if, but you get an ace while you get 15 cards. And uh, then of course the dealer, the card that the dealer calls turns up for themselves, that one is wild, that round. So you see it changes every round. And whoever goes out first has to give whatever cards they have left in their hand to the one that went out. And we play up to 2,000 <laughs> each game. Of course, we use two decks, so you see they get quite a count. What, what, is, what is the pointing score? An ace and a wild card counts 50. And uh, everything up to 10 counts 5. And the 10 and jack and queen and king count 10. Okay. 2,000, huh? And it doesn't take you that long? Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, if you have an ace uh, and a, a wild card, why, well, that's 100 right there. But of course, every king and queen. So you can get, well, sometimes you can get a count of 300 or more. And, <laughs> and sometimes five. <laughs> yeah, sometimes five. <laughs> sometimes nothing. Yeah. I, afterwards, you always have crackers, tea, crackers, and cheese. Yeah. And a good goodies. <laughs> now, did you want to share anything, or did you want to talk about your mom at all when she was with this group, or? Oh well, I can tell you, I grew up right down the road from Esther's. I've lived there from the time I was seven, no six, maybe. And it's an old schoolhouse that my folks fixed into a house. The schoolhouse came from the trading post. It was one of the very first schools, I think, in the area. And they moved it eventually from down by the river up to where it sits today. And so, these, these, there was four or five, six, seven, eight old girls. I, we always called them the old girls. They went walking every morning at nine. And then they would go back to somebody's house and they always had their tea and crackers and cheese. <laughs> Seemed to be the main thing. Then they played cards. And the afternoon went, well, they, they played for years, and then they, you know, they kept dying off, and the group changed a little bit, but there's still a few core members. It was, uh, now, did, when, you're, when you're playing cards, does anybody get any word in edgewise, or? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes we lose the whole train of thought and don't know what to play. <laughs> <laughs> I belong to the, uh, tell me. Shelby Hogs already one time, and uh, anyhow, I had some in. And I know they came home from school, Dick and, and uh, Pete, and, and uh, they come right in and change their clothes and go right out to the barn to work. And the, uh, the girls all commented on that. They, they always knew that that was their job, to do the chores. That's when we have all the cows. I can say this about Walt. Walt had a lot of young boys from the work for him, including my son. And my son worked out, learned many good work ethics from working under Walt. Tell me today, we as boys working for him, the first thing they have to learn is how to clean a car right. And that was Walt taught Brian. I said, there was one way and one way only. One way only. And you didn't do it that way. It wasn't done right. You went back and did it again. And now the kids had to work for him. They have to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, when we were in the garage there, you had to send in and you had to get a permit for the boys, kids to wash cars. And we also, then we were doing uh, the trees and they were, we had, most of them were uh, scotch pine. And anyhow, in uh, a certain time of year, in June, usually when they start budding, that's when you had to shear them. And then they were using knives that were real sharp and, you know, <laughs> do that yeah. until 
uh, cut that the house down, and so uh, we had them wear things over their knees and so forth. But anyhow, we sent them to the state to get a permit for that. Well, it came back. They didn't need a permit to use this, app, but they needed a, a <laughs> protective clothing to wash cars. <laughs> <laughs> to wash cars. <laughs> Think about uh, Judy's family and uh, our family. We used to go in the spring. They always went up to Canada fishing. Uh, Walt and uh, Judy's dad, Jim, they wanted to go fishing, so the whole family would go. So that was quite a deal. You know, I know, I know you're going to say that you all you remember is work, but <laughs> you've got good, good stories about your mom that you want to share? Or? That I can have on camera? <laughs> 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 well, she didn't make us do the dishes so much that I can remember, but we had to keep, kind of keep our room straightened up and couldn't track in the house. I still remember one time I wanted to buy these pair of boots that had deep lugs on them. And she said, you're not buying those things, they'll track in dirt. Well, I bought them anywhere without her knowing about it <laughs> until I tracked in dirt the first time. Uh, but, uh, no, she was a good mother, I'll say that for her. Oh, and she was a good cook, Dick. Yes, I, I that's right. Yeah, we always did. She was, yeah. She always, always made the food. best homemade bread. Yeah, okay. and her daughters do it today. Yeah, uh -huh. always had a smile on her face, right? <laughs> I didn't get into the family until we were married, of course, and so that was. We, I, I moved up here from Chicago. My parents had a home in Chicago and a summer home up here, and we spent summers up here. And I, I knew Leonard a little bit then, but I, not much. But when we moved up here, why? We got a little bit more serious, but then he went away to war, so we waited until we got he got home again. So that's about the story of my life. <laughs> so you just one of the visitors from the Carolina? Did you come on the Carolina from Chicago? Mm -hmm. oh. They had a home up here, out on the, it was Flower Creek Road, and that road, getting to it, was all clay. And it wasn't black topped, it wasn't graveled, it wasn't anything. And every time we came up when I was a kid, we'd get stuck in those ravines. And we'd have to go and get the August layman to pull us off with his tractor. <laughs> so it, uh, yeah, then when my dad retired, why, uh, we moved up here permanently then, yeah. Well, at one time they had the car dealership. Grandpa was in the logging business. Marion was building houses. In the logging business too. In the logging business too, building houses and logging, Marion and George and Leonard. Yeah, all in logging. Henry Hunt had the greenhouse uh, on it. Mary Gleason, their only sister, had the uh, had dime that. store yeah. on it. Did I miss any? No. On it. So they had all, and of course, none of them in Montague anymore. The mm -hmm. only one still around is the hardware. And of course, there isn't even a honey in there yeah, anymore. It's right. just there in name only mm -hmm. on it. Uh, actually, the John Deere dealership went out of business. The uh, Chrysler dealer, of course, has been, was sold a couple of times, and that's still operating. Uh, that's Lake Shore. Yeah, that's yeah. Lake Shore. Uh, the dime store. I think Mary sold that, and then they went out of business. The greenhouse uh, that was moved, that was sold to a Weesey, and then that went out of business. Uh, on it, so. The greenhouse, house. Uh, the house that they lived in, uh, by the greenhouse there downtown, that was moved up here, and that's the house on Montague Tree Farm. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been, they've Changed somewhat, <laughs> added something on to but, it. But in it's the same there, um, Leonard and I lived in the little greenhouse when it was a greenhouse. And I would work for Henry part time and work for Whitehall Metal Studios. I did the office work over there. Oh. And, and uh, so I was back and forth during the planting season. I'd help him plan. And the, the deal was that we could live there for nothing if I had to, if we needed work in there, I would work. Or if on a weekend somebody came in and said, hey, I need a corsage or I need this or that, you know, I was able to make one of those and, and do that. <laughs> and, and then he had, it was all heated by wood at the time. And, uh, uh, and if the wood went down or if they, finally then they got the gas in, I guess it was. And we maintained the, uh, we maintained the, uh, 
the heat in the building while we live there. Make sure he, nothing froze the plants or anything. Yeah. That's their monthly flowers. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Yes. 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 Yes, my kids all of a sudden will find out that I every month. Yes. Yeah, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, yes. That makes you think of spring, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and my foster son, Bob, he's in on that, too. Oh. So. Now, now, what about on the 14th? Are you going to get another one? <laughs> how did Carl get started in the fire department? With his dad. Well, it's because his dad was in it. Yeah, okay. because his dad was, yeah, that's how he... John Teban and all them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how he got started. Of course, Jack didn't have any choice, and he had to go into yeah, it. Yeah, then he had to go into it. Yeah. Well, he didn't stay that, that long. long time. Yeah. He was too busy. Too busy. <laughs> yeah. He was too busy other places. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it was about 40-something. Yeah, because the new station they dedicated to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They dedicated okay. to him. Yeah, so... And Leonard was in it. He must oh, have been in it about that long. He was yeah, in about that long. And Carl oh, yeah. was on the road quite a bit with Continental, mm -hmm. if I remember right. And Leonard was assistant chief, so he yeah. he was called upon quite quite a bit, especially even with the uh, big fire when the, the Franklin House went down. I think Carl was out yeah. of town then, and Leonard was, he was out of town. town. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, I got pictures of that too for you. Okay. But you could when the fire whistle would blow, I remember I'd go out the back step of the hardware. And yeah. the third whistle, there was usually a truck Somebody. leaving. Yeah. But the, we, I think we counted there was as many as seven firemen that were right in town. Oh, yeah. They just ran down I to the fire. I have to tell you this one about Leonard and Charlie Ornberger. Charlie Ornberger owned the Shell Station right on the corner, oh, yeah. and Leonard was in the hardware. So when that whistle blew, they dropped everything and they ran, jumped in their cars or whatever they did, but usually they ran. But that one time Leonard was coming down the hill, it must have been on a weekend or something, coming down the hill and Charlie was coming from the other way and they hit right under the <laughs> under the spotlight, under the stoplight, stop yes, yes, yes. So that was the big joke of the day. Not very funny, but <laughs> they, didn't get they didn't get hurt, no. Yeah, they had to be on the weekend because otherwise they would have been working. They would have been working, they would have been yeah. on the yeah. weekend, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, there was one time we had a fire in the garage uh, where Myers Well Drilling is now. Uh -huh. And that was before they had 911. And Stan Schrock, the salesman, was trying to find the number to call the fire department. And Marv Huss, the mechanic, was a fireman. Okay, yeah. And uh -huh. he ran over and got a truck and came back before Stan ever found the number to call it. Oh, geez. <laughs> so, so after that, Stan and big marking pencil wrote the fire number up fire on number. the wall. So they could see yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When Leonard played football, he said that night, you wouldn't dare walk across the bridge. You know, they, they were just it was battling, oh. practically, yes. When I came down there where they played football was on uh, this side, the east side of the early school there. That's where they always played. And there was always, in the fall, there was always sandbergs in there. Oh, yeah. you know, they always got the sandbergs all over when they were playing. But that's where they played football. And they used, then they played football too in the afternoon. About three thirty or something. Mm -hmm. I know, like after school, more or less. Or, well, they'd start a little bit before that. But of course, they never had lights or anything like that. Of course, to play at night. So. Well, that's how it became Memorial Field. Because then, after the war, they got together. I think someone said that uh, Pete Lipka said, "I'll get the money," and I think he and wrote a letter well, to Dad or something like that. That he said, the work. You, "Yeah, if you yeah. get the get the work." on it, and that's how they built Memorial Field, and I think that was one of the first uh, lighted football fields. So. And, and Leonard always used to say that they shoveled, the Hunt Boys shoveled all that field by hand. Yeah, wow. yeah they didn't have... No, no, they, yeah, that, that was... They didn't have front end loaders in that no, back no, then. No, 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 And I know they when they redid the football field up, the new one up here now, they said that playing surface was still one of the best in the conference. Really? Right? Something. And I said, well, they had, you know, farmers in that. Oh, yeah. Put, put that uh, in there, mm -hmm. and they knew how to grow crops. They knew how to grow grass. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, played football. Yes, four for, years. for Montague? Yes. And they, before they had face masks. Yeah. Okay. Because I had trouble with a bloody nose, so that they were a leather helmet. They gave me a leather helmet with a face mask. Well, like, 
told the coach this isn't working because they grabbed the face mask and tackled me and they didn't have tape right. face mask rule link because they didn't have them and so I back to wearing the regular helmet and put up with a bloody nose. <laughs> and what about basketball anything else you play anything else or just played some basketball yeah. or the foster son mother said she had Tom Cassida who was my age was a good basketball player he lived with us the two, last two years of high school and four years of college went on into the service. Uh, well, Dad, Dad ran track, and he, I think he was one of the, the faster ones in the 100-yard dash. And Mark um, was a wrestler, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mark was a wrestler, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't have wrestling when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And then Dad played uh, baseball, I think. To, in, baseball was he a catcher? Or? And basketball and football. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody played because there weren't that many to that's get right. a team. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Everybody had to get in and take part. Mm -hmm. Walt worked out at Whitbacks, which became Claire Nelson's uh, farm, and he used to work out there. And he'd have to get up in the morning milk cows, and then he'd have to walk or run all the way to school. No school, <laughs> which of that. course was the early school then. That was the whole school high school and everything. But that's that's the way he went to high school. He had to uh, walk from out there and walk back and forth morning and night. Morning. Hmm. Well, that's what everybody here, well, except Bev graduated from early school yeah. and it's still standing. It's been, I want to say it's been remodeled when it's that old, I consider it's been restored a couple of times. <laughs> Added on to a little bit. You know. Yes, yes. Added on. But, you know, the basic structure is still there, almost 100 years old. Mm -hmm.